Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. By the way, shout out to my buddy Kevin Mole at Sky Labs in Des Moines. I put this video together really quickly because I had so many questions on the Weem Room Correction EQ for Vintage Gear video. And, and I thought it's just easier to do another video than try to answer them all in war and peace length comments in the video section. So what I've done is I've taken a Cambridge MXN 10 and it is just an optic, excuse me, just an analog source. I've got a connected RCA cable to the line in on the Weem Pro. Then from the Weem Pro, I've got an optical cable connected to the little mystery deck, which you guys will find out about soon enough with the swappable op amps. Anyway, and then I'm running this line out into the Marantz amp. So the analog signal from the Cambridge unit is being digitized by the Weem, and then the Weem is outputting that digital signal to the DAC. So I could also connect the Weem directly line level out to the amplifier and skip having an external DAC, but I thought it'd be interesting to see. Obviously, the Weem's got a decent DAC. It's not bad, but this is a little bit better. It's a mystery, but it's a little bit better than the one that's in there. So I just thought I'd try it out just to check all of the goes into and goes out as. So again, analog into the Weem being digitized, that digital signal going out to the DAC. From the DAC, it's converted back to analog and then sent to the amplifier. I know it sounds confusing, but here's the thing. If you've got an analog source, turntable, cassette deck, tuner, reel-to-reel, -reel, whatever, and you're, it's being digitized to apply room correction and equalization, I think if there is any signal degradation in that analog to digital conversion, we're never going to know it. I mean, the room correction itself is going to have a larger impact on the sound than any loss of resolution, potential loss of resolution that the A to D conversion would create. And if there is a link, and I'll put it in the description of the video, there's a link to an uh, audio science review where someone did measure the A to D and they found it to be actually quite good. But then I thought, all right, if you just wanted to do the Weem with an analog source, that's fine. And you could go line out. But I thought if you wanted to try something a little different, so I took optical out to here, into the DAC, DAC into the, into the amplifier. Now, I have a way of capturing video on my iPad. So I'm going to run you through all the software and show you exactly how it works. And we're going to go ahead and do a room EQ, a proper room EQ uh, with this setup using um, the Cambridge as an analog input to the Weem and the Weem digitally out to the little mystery DAC. So I think you'll find it really compelling. And I certainly did. So, and then after we do that, I'm going to give you a little summation. So let's go over and see what's going on on the iPad. Okay, here we are on the iPad. I'm going to go ahead and start the Wii. And I have to do it in portrait format, I'm sorry, just because of the way the screen recorder works. So it found the Weem right away. And what we want to do is along the bottom, it says browse device. Device will show you the screen you see now. Search is obviously search for music on streaming services. And settings is some other network stuff where you look for updates. But I'm going to touch the little gear within the window that says no music selected. And that brings up all of the settings. So what we're going to do is down here, we see room correction and EQ. But what I want you to see is audio out is set for optical out, but audio input I can set for CD player. And I just did that. So let's go back to that screen. And I'm starting some music on the Cambridge streamer as an analog input. Remember, it's just an analog input. So now we're going to go ahead and go to room correction. And I'm going to do it proper this time. So I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to hold it this way in my seating position so you guys can actually see it. So next it'll play a noise. That noise just confirms that the mic is syncing with the Weem software. So now we'll do the frequency sweep. Okay, now it's doing its calculations, and it'll bring up a graph showing what the target response was, how much equalization, what was measured, so forth and so on. And we'll see that in just a second. And I think it's really, really interesting. And again, for vintage gear, this is amazing. So the yellow line on top is the target. The line in white, which is a little bit hard to see, is actually what was measured. The purple line just under the yellow line is about the amount of equalization needed to achieve that yellow target. 
And then the green line is actually the predicted response. So if you see where the white line jumps up above the yellow line, there is a corresponding dip in the purple line, the amount of equalization, to flatten that out. And then the green line shows it being much flatter and much more accurate. So let's complete the correction. And again, it brings us out to the main screen. So we can go to the EQ. And the other day when we looked at this, I wasn't sure what those numbers, that little yellow dot was, but it is, corresponds to the frequency. So you can see the curve that the parametric EQ is applied. And so if we go to number one, you'll notice that it's at 91 hertz and it's 2.5 dB of gain, but a very small Q, right? The higher the Q, the narrower the amount of frequencies, the lower the Q, the broader the range is. So if we go down here to right about 200, 189, I think, uh, let's see where 200, yeah, 189, you'll see a big dip, and that Q is 4.49, so it's a higher Q, and actually at 229, it's a 4.5, so again, that's a very narrow bandwidth of frequencies that are being affected. So then you can see that, and I think that's really compelling. Now, I can do it, you'll notice I can choose to do line in, and it just applied it now, that EQ, the room EQ was applied to my analog input. So again, we're going in analog, it's digitizing, and it's going out either line level into the amp, out of the Weems output, or optical out to the little mystery DAC, and then that's going out to the amplifier. So I think that's really cool. So now we're going to go ahead and go back and we're going to go to room correction. Now this I didn't show you the other day. Up in the upper right hand corner, upper, right below where it shows battery strength, there's a little gear. If we touch that, it shows the room correction and the target curve. And as I mentioned, there are three target curves. There's the B and K curve, which is kind of a more neutral curve, a little bit maybe more mid-centric. The Harman curve, which of course is a little bit more base-centric, and then a flat curve. Um, so you have a, a choice of three curves. And you can change the curve. I could go in and change the curve right now to a Harman curve. I'd have to re-sweep the room, though, uh, to achieve that Harman curve. So we're going to keep it on B and K. Now, on the equalize below, you'll see the frequencies it's working with are 58 to 640. Now, I can adjust those any way I want to if I want to change those frequencies, right? I can. I can also change how much gain. The max amount of gain is 2.5 dB. I can adjust that up or down. And then the maximum Q is 4.5. If I want more gentle slopes, I can reduce that number. If I want steeper slopes or tighter bands of equalization, higher Q, I can adjust that as well with that slider. So I can take it anywhere I want to go. So that's that. So now that's the room correction. Of course, I can turn it on and off. So let's come all the way back out here, and we're going to go ahead and start the music again. Oh, you know what? It went back to Wi-Fi input. Sorry about that. So let's go to line out. And you'll hear the music. Now, the room correction, as you can see, is applied. It's there, and it's happening. And same with the equalization. It's there, and it's doing it on an analog source. And I think that's super compelling. So anyway, let me wrap this one up. You can see what we're doing here. Uh, and then we'll, I'll turn this around and you can look at me. Isn't that a joy? And then I'll do a quick summation. Thanks so much. Well, isn't that cool as hell? I mean, this little device is a real game changer for vintage hi-fi. We're taking analog signals in. We're converting them to a digital signal. We're processing it with room correction and equalization. And we can output from this device into our vintage gear or we can output optically or coaxial into an outboard digital analog converter, maybe of better quality and into our vintage gear. So that opens up a lot of doors. And again, as I said, that conversion from analog to digital, I don't think will reduce any resolution from most, dig most analog sources. I think the benefit of the room correction and having the ability to do the equalization in the digital domain out more than outweighs any potential loss of detail in that A to D conversion. So again, very, very compelling. And for 150 bucks, I mean, a little shit Locius uh, four band EQ costs 150 bucks and it's not, doesn't have a streamer built in, it doesn't have a DAC built in, it doesn't have room EQ built in, or excuse me, room correction built in. I think this is a compelling little device uh, and it gets a big thumbs up for me, especially on the vintage side of things. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. 
If you did, please like, please subscribe. A lot of the folks who watch my videos aren't subscribed and it would really help the channel if you did. And thank you so much for all the time you guys give me on the videos. I hope you got something out of this. Um, I'm sure this will generate a lot of questions uh, and that's great. Put them in the comments. Any of you have commented, no, I read the comments. I look at the comments. I respond. I really enjoy our interaction in that, in that comment area. In the description of the video will be a link to the Audio Science Review article where they measured the, the A to D converter on this, actually measured the whole device. And also in the description are Amazon affiliate links. You know the drill on that. And below that are my playlists. You guys need to send me playlists, please. I'm going to put them, I have a community post going right now with playlists in there, and I would love for you to share your playlists with us, especially any of my overseas non-U.S. Uh, viewers. I would love to hear what you're listening to uh, wherever you are and what, you know, what's popular and what do you like and all that kind of stuff. It, it is, to me, that interaction and that sharing of music is way more important than anything else. That's one of the best parts of this. Anyway, I'm done, and I promise I won't say anyway so many times in this video. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. This is at home with the old guy hi-fi channel saying it's now time for you to go listen to some music, maybe on an analog source being digitized by your Ween Pro going into your vintage amp. Anyway, thank you very much.